You see that structure built like a pulpit onto the nave of the 12th century church of all saints here in York? Well, that is the home of a religious recluse, a refuge, the cell of a hermit, a solitary man who's lived the last 30 years of his life in that tiny room, 10 foot by 8. Let's meet him. It's a quiet churchyard, though it stands only 50 yards from the bus station. And here, hemmed in by old York, brother Walter Willman, he likes to be called brother, has lived since he arrived back in the 1930s to be the sacristan of all saints. In this tiny refuge, he's passed the lonely years, with a window overlooking the graveyard and a squint, a medieval peephole in one corner of the cell through which he can observe the activities of the church below. He's here rent-free, and he's not the first tenant to live so close to these old and cold stone walls. The first person to live a solitary life like yours, Brother Wilman, on this site was, I believe, a, a female hermit or a, an anchoress who was walled up right here. Yes, uh, at least underneath this room, she was walled up in a room. Uh, the idea was these people came and after a time of probation, they... Uh, they decided to anchor, and uh, there was a ceremony, the bishop came and enclosed them. And um, there they lived a life of prayer, and uh, this particular one was supposed to have, the Blessed Virgin Mary supposed to appear to her several times. Some people, Brother Wilman, would see the walling in of your predecessors as a sort of mortification of the flesh that's unhealthy and perhaps morbid. Yes, but it wasn't considered so at that time, but it would be today. Well, at least you're not walled in no, here. No, I'm not walled in at all, no. Why have you chosen this solitary life? Well, I don't know I, that I've chosen it, uh, really chosen it, but I've been sort of... Uh, uh, sort of uh, drafted into it. It, it. The opening came and being tired of being moved about from post to post as a lay worker, uh, being in lodgings, and uh, when this kind priest offered me a home here, I was glad to come. Well, you Several. were a comparatively young man then, uh, Brother well, over, Wilma. over 40. Well, that's quite young these days. Yes. If, you'd, if you had your time over again, would you choose to live alone in a cell like this for another 30 years? Oh, no, I don't suppose I should. But, do you see... Why not? Well, because uh, I'm, not that, I'm not so pious as all that. Uh, a man must be very... very uh, must be very good and pious to choose a sort of life like this uh, of his own voluntary choice. So you don't recommend your type of life for anyone else? Oh, certainly not. There are very few people would be suited to it. Uh, but, but would you call yourself, in fact, a happy man? Yes, I'm uh, quite happy with, uh, in the circumstances that I am because I have uh, a sort of life that's interesting to me as having a sort of religious uh, frame of mind. But surely you could have got around very much more than you have. You, you have stayed here voluntarily, alone, in this cell for 30 years. Yes, I, I dare say I could, but I liked it, and uh, uh, perhaps I wasn't ambitious. Uh, perhaps I, I, I might have stirred myself and even got, uh, in these days at any rate, into a college and uh, got s realized in a sense uh, what was i thought was my vocation well of course you could perhaps have gone to an almshouse which would have been at least warmer and drier than this cold damp cell well uh, i dare say i could but uh, i should have been away from my interests i prefer to stay here because I don't think I should be 
comfortable or interested elsewhere after all this time. Well, thank you, Brother Wilman, and we wish you many more contented years. <laughs>